Hi guys, it's Udo's and welcome to the Udo show. Today I have a great guest online. His name is Kevin Sorbo and uh, you may know him as Hercules. And when I think of Hercules, I think of Kevin Sorbo because he's the man and uh, he's doing a lot of amazing things right now. He has his own production studios called Sorbo Studios where he creates all these amazing movies with great messages behind them which is super hard to find in Hollywood, as you may know. So um, thank you so much, Kevin Sorbo, for having me or, you know, coming on my show. <laughs> and I'm really happy that you you could join me today on my show. And uh, let's just get to it. What made you want to start your own production studio? Well, pretty much I got booted out of Hollywood for being a conservative. So um, <laughs> uh, they, they didn't like the things I was saying. And I was, in, I was just saying, hey, let's, let's look at both sides of the issue here. But Hollywood, uh, you know, tolerance and freedom of speech is a one-way street with them. And it's unfortunate. I mean, they, uh, my studio, my manager, and my, I mean, my agent, they made a lot of money off of me through uh, seven years on Hercules Five and Andromeda. I did about 20 movies with them up to that point, but uh, 10 years ago, we parted ways. And so I formed my own company, SorboStudios.com, and i um, been doing a lot of movies on my own. I've shot 50 movies over the last uh, wow. 10 years, yeah, 11 years, and uh, not all of them out of my studio. I mean, a lot of them I get I booked from other independent movie makers, but uh, staying busy, I shot four last year. I directed two of them, and uh, they should be all out this year. Um, I'm leaving for Israel soon to do another documentary there. And then I go to Poland to shoot a World War II true story movie. So knock on wood, I'm staying busy uh, without Hollywood, which is fine. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, uh, I know personally how hard it is to like raise funds and everything. Yeah. So like how how hard is it as someone who's like a filmmaker or, you know, actor or producer to like get into all this and have their own production studio and raising funds and stuff like that? It's, it's not easy. I mean, I, it's, it's word of mouth. I meet a lot of people, you know, I'm an avid golfer. So I meet very wealthy guys at these charity events I go at and I talk and they like what I do. Um, so you never know where it's going to come from, but it's, you know, most of my movies in the three to $4 million range and people might think that's a lot of money, but that's basically catering budget on Pirates of the Caribbean or Avengers or Spider-Man. Those are $300 million movies. And uh, that's what I've got to compete against. But, you know, you mentioned earlier, I like to do movies that have a good message. I want to do movies that have hope and love and redemption and faith and laughter and forgiveness, things that Hollywood does nothing about anymore. Most of Hollywood's movies deal with hate and anger. They se anger, they celebrate the anti-hero. They celebrate divisiveness. They ce celebrate, uh, you know, just so much stuff that's so negative in the world right now. And they, they everything's, look, I'm not a prudent anyway, but everything's so over-sexualized and over-violent and over... I, I always get a kick out of these A-list actors that come out against guns when every movie they do, they kill a hundred people in a movie, you know, and you know who these guys are, because I'm not going to name, I don't need to name any action star that is out against guns. These are the same guys that do movies that are just filled with violence. So the hypocrisy just kind of cracks me up, but uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the battles there, but I'm grateful that I still keep busy, but it's not, it's not easy. Like you said, it's hard to find those funds. Yeah, no, no, I totally hear you. So I got to start picking up golf because I need to fund some movies too. <laughs> so I'm going to start going like hitting it's a them. Great, it's a great game. I've been playing since <laughs> I was a kid. My dad worked at a golf course, so yeah. I grew up with it. So yeah, my mom like loves golf, but she's always telling me like, oh, go to a golf course and, you know, you find some great people there and stuff. And I'm like, okay, let's you go. Find, you do find good people. There. Yeah. Like I, we went to Pebble Beach and I finally was like, OK, you know what, mom, you're right. Let's go golfing together. And she's like, no, I already have a tea time. I don't have time to teach you anything. <laughs> Come on, mom. <laughs> I know. Then we go to like the the bar at the, you know, Pebble Beach Hotel or whatever it was. And she's like trying to pick up some husband for me and stuff like that. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> she's funny but well, um, that's a nice that's a nice golf course so your mom picked a yeah. good place <laughs> yeah no that's uh i agree i usually go there and just like just yeah. stay in the hotel room but um where do, you, where do you live so i'm in la oh you are i left yeah. three and a half years ago i live in florida oh nice yeah i was thinking about that the other day like i love it here it's been a great move i miss california's weather i miss the mountains but i don't miss anything else you can keep the traffic the taxes the politics you got it. I it's left the worst governor in the country. We have the best governor in the country here. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Right now, it's like super insane right now. Like everybody's like getting robbed and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, well, because so. that's what they do. And those, I mean, it's in, amazing. And then you got the insanity of, uh, you know, these, this control and fear over our lives through COVID. I'm, 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 I've been, I haven't worn a mask out here in, in a year and a half in, Cal- in Florida. Wow, that's that's really good. I need to move there yeah. because I'm like, I'm so over it. It feels like everybody just kind of gave up on the whole COVID thing and they're just oh, like, because, yeah, whatever. because they made a big deal out of it on purpose that they, they yeah. wanted to destroy people's lives. But yeah, it's unfortunate. They did a very good job of, you know, hurting a lot of people around the world. Yeah, it's really sad. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask you too, like, why do you think Hollywood is having such a hard time with uh, creating movies with like a good message behind them? You know, I honestly don't know. I think things really changed in the 1960s. I mean, up until the 60s, there was no rating system for movies. Every movie was pretty much a G or a PG rated movie. I mean, X-rated movies have been around forever, but for pretty much the movies that Hollywood put out for the general public, um, the 1960s changed. You got the free love, you had the hippie movement, you had Vietnam War, you had... Uh, all the racial injustices. I mean, it was it was really during the 60s where um, we started celebrating the anti-hero. We started celebrating the bad guy. And it's just really accelerated on itself, I think, in the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, every, everything is in movies that are just dark. It's a dark side of human nature. It's the evil side of human nature. It's, it's, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I, 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 I fell in love with acting because I, I fell in love with the old movies. I, I love movies where you can watch, where you can, you can laugh, but maybe you can recognize, you know, you identify with somebody on the screen or, you know, somebody like that mm-hmm. right now, you know, these action movies would still do great. You know, I'm not, I like Avatar. I like Avengers. I like those movies too, but it's like really going to a video game because it's, it's more than more than half the movie is special effects. Yeah. Uh, the, the actors are not even there. They just, you know, they, they do a, they do a green screen of these guys and they put them in, they make a cartoon out of them in a way. So yeah, um, I just, you just walk out going, okay. And Hollywood will keep doing those movies as long as they keep making $2 billion. I get it. It's a business, yeah. but it's unfortunate that they don't want to do There's 80 million homes out there that want the movies that I do, but exactly. they don't, they, how do I reach those people? Hollywood has Spider-Man for instance, recently up. Hundred million dollars in in promotion on it. So yeah. the Spider Man commercial is on every basketball game, every football game. It's every soap opera. People just get saturated, with it, so they, they're aware of it. They know it. And until people stop going to those movies, because the storylines to me are all the same now. I mean, they never change. And um, until people stop going to them, Hollywood's going to keep making them because that's one place they make money. And they're afraid to try something new. And they're afraid. And their ideology is is such a way that they really don't want to. Uh, to make movies that have a positive message, which is sad. Yeah, it's very interesting too, because I have a friend that's a producer and he made the movie Black Swan. And he told me that it took him nine years to get this movie made because a lot of, uh, you know, the producers and the big studios, they didn't believe that two women can hold uh, the screen together and that it will be like profitable, right? So... I thought that that was like, I didn't even know that that was a thing until I started hearing like these different things about it. I mean, the movie came out, but it's pretty, it was pretty, it wasn't widely seen, but it was, it was critically acclaimed. I know she won the best actress in that movie as well. Yeah. Um, it's just, but it's not a movie they look at, they go, oh, I can't make a lot of money because most people don't want to sit through that. It's not because two women are in it. It's just, it's just a sub- subject matter because right now, Hollywood, last 10 years, very busy putting women in these action movies and making them the, the central star of the movie. So yeah, um, I, I know both my friends out there, they're saying it's got to be a woman in this role. Even though somebody wrote for a man, they go, they've got to switch it for a woman. So yeah. I, I think that tide is changing in a, in a good way. Yeah. Um, but uh, I still, I still think Hollywood is afraid to do movies. Uh, occasionally I do. Like I think Green Book was an amazing uh, movie with Viggo Mortensen. It was a yeah. wonderful movie with a wonderful story. Blindside, you know, was another, you know, was a really, really, really good movie. And I, I, I like to do movies like that, that are based on true stories and uh, have a lot of heart and soul to them. I mean, you can have the drama, they also need drama and there's always drama in everybody's lives. We all have roadblocks in our life. So, um, but I, I think um, I'm gonna keep doing the movies I do to battle the culture that Hollywood's putting out there. Walt Disney said in the 1950s that movies and television will influence our youth. He said that in the 1950s. Yeah. Um, G. Wiz, do you think uh, there's any influence on the, the violence we see in our streets of America today? Yeah, oh, I think yeah. so. 
Yeah, I think so too. I mean, right now it's just there are people getting influenced by social media and like you name it, everything is influenced in the music, social media, and it's all like kind of like going towards the bad way, (laughs) you know? Uh So yeah, it's very rare to find like people that are like actually giving a good message and, you know, kind of staying. um, And I'm going to keep making those. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep making those. I promise you. It's just, um, it's just once what you mentioned earlier, it's tough to find the funding, which is really kind of surprises me because we have to invest in our culture because uh, politics runs downstream from culture. Who runs the culture? Hollywood does. The mainstream media does. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're, they're even afraid to me. They're afraid to even print the truth. I mean, even the CDC came out now to get back to COVID. The CDC came out about two months ago saying, yeah, we, the study shows that masks really don't do anything. And we all knew that. I mean, when people can smoke and smoke through it, there's no, if the smoke can go through the mask, trust me, that virus that you cannot see goes through that mask. And, yeah. and the hospitals are filling up with people that have double jabs, wear the mask. All, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. We need, it's sad what we've done, like I said, to the world. And I, I, I'm i just sick of it. And that's one reason why uh, Facebook took me down completely about nine yeah. months ago for things that I was saying, things that I was posting what other doctors were saying. Yeah. I was saying, hey, Here's 10,000 doctors in Europe saying this. What do you think? Oh, you can't put that out there. I go, but these are doctors saying that. Can't we have that point of view? But, yeah. you know, the, tr- the trolls and little putz- putzes of Facebook uh, don't have the bravery to, uh, you know, I would love to meet them in person and understand their ideology and their logic and taking people like me down just because I have an opposite point of view or posting other people's opposite point of view. It's this cancel culture and this woke culture is just insanity right now. Do you think it's actually just the cancel culture or is it also that maybe Facebook themselves is censoring stuff? Well, Facebook is, they hire these people. They hire yeah. these, and I, you know, these people that decide, and they really are going after people that have a different uh, political point of view. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I certainly, yeah. certainly in the liberal world, I get trashed and attacked every day just for having a different, different opinion. Yeah. And um, then they, they, they can cancel me from speaking events and Comic-Con shows, which cracks me up. Um, uh, I would love to meet, I would love to face my accuser because they know who I am. They yeah. know who I am. I don't know who they are. I don't know what their face looks like. I don't know what they do for a living. I would like to, I would love to do a documentary on their lives because I'm pretty sure I know who they are uh, psychologically. I know, I know um, the type of life that they lead. And I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah, what's so crazy to me is that, you know, for instance, uh, people know who you are and people know who I am, but there's there's these people behind the screens that are just hiding, right? And oh, yeah. they can say whatever they want, they can attack you however they want, yeah. but nobody's ever being held accountable, right? But yeah. people in the public eye or people that are, you know, putting their faces out there and stuff, they're actually being held accountable for everything that they say, they don't say, mm-hmm. however people may perceive it. Oh, these, these punks are very brave in the basement of their mom's home. I'm sure they're all yeah. over 30 years old, still living at home. And- getting paid yeah. by George Soros and collecting unemployment from your tax dollars and mine. Um, yeah, it's crazy. They're very brave doing that. But one-on-one, they're, 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 trust me, they're a bunch of wimps. They really are. They will ask for you, like, for your picture. <laughs> yes, <laughs> some, some might. <laughs> some might. Most, most of them won't because they, they're miserable. They don't like for yeah. themselves. Yeah. They, you, you know, you're supposed to love your neighbor like yourself, but they don't love themselves. They look in the mirror every day and they hate what they see. And they want to drag you down and me down because misery loves company. But yeah. um, it does nothing to my life in terms of uh, affecting my life. But when I get in a form like yours, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about it because it's just, it's amazing to me that we give a voice. The Internet is the Wild West today. And we give a voice to these punks and losers that uh, they, they that this in their minds make them a hero. But really, the anger only makes them more angrier. Yeah, it's that whole hero mentality. But I think um, down the line somewhere, social media has to start implementing like a ID kind of form where people are being held accountable because there's like death threats and, you know. Oh, I know. It's of, amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> they can do- I, I get yeah. them. I crack up. That guy stays online. He threatens me and threatens my family. All I said were masks are useless. Yeah. You guys, oh my God, the, the sirens all go off. We live in such a whacked out weird world right now. And we, like I said, we give the, we give the, the voice to the smallest percentage of people right now, instead of having the majority rule. 
And um, that, that was a reason for having voting in the first place was that, you know, the, the, the voter, the person who receives the most votes should be the winner. And that's just sort of the way it should be. But uh, we don't live our lives that way. But it's, uh, it's I don't know, it's, we, we, I, I think the tide is turning because people are getting fed up with it right now. And yeah. more people are, you look at public education, parents are now really aware of how horrible our public education system is. And one of the blessings of COVID, 2 million more students are now being homeschooled. They've been pulled yeah. out. And I just read an article recently in um, I think the state of Washington, mm -hmm. uh, a couple hundred thousand students out of that state alone now are being homeschooled and they're freaking out because they're going to lose those tax dollars. Yeah. Because kids are now, they're going to go, look, why should we, we need, we need to get rid of the government running the public schools. We need to run in a, uh, and you can still tax people to go, but you, people, people, parents should be able to pick where their schools for their kids go. Yeah. And uh, if they want to go to a liberal school, fine. If they want to go to conservative school, fine. But let them decide where they want their kids to go. Yeah, I, I feel like it's whoever, you know, the parents are that, that are raising their, their children. They can pick whatever, you know, type yeah. of views. I say homeschool. Them. Don't go to universities. It's a waste of money and a waste of time. I, I agree. I actually went and got a master's degree and then a bunch of student loans. And yeah, like, <laughs> you know, in a good way, it's you good know, because it expands. I, enjoy, I enjoyed college for this. I enjoyed college for the social aspect and sports and things like that. But yeah. I, um, uh, you know, I had a double business major and I, I say I, I'm, I'm, I'm in show business. So I'm using it in the business world. But I knew what yes. I wanted to do before I got into college. I knew I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. So uh, speaking of being like people being held accountable and stuff. Uh, so what I'm in the process of doing is changing the law against people that are committing hack leak crimes of private images and videos and distributing it online and, you know, putting it all out there, basically. And right now, these hackers, they're getting sentenced as someone who's committing a hack crime, like hacking someone's email, something very basic, and not someone as committing a sex crime, which is crazy, because they're basically doing something like that's very similar to like rape, but it's online. So it's online rape and online sex trafficking, profiting from it and making millions yeah. and millions of dollars of it. And I just, um, I find that it's strange that the laws are not out, you know, that they're so outdated that they need to be updated because the technology updated, right? So what do you think about um, the laws right now, how they are and how they're outdated? And what do you think needs to be done? Well, you're, but you're right. It is, it's internet sex traffic is what it is. Yeah. And so the sex trafficking world has definitely had a bigger light on top of it over the last couple of years. And I think the next step is what's going to happen within the internet as well, because it has to be. Yeah. Um, the amount of money that this, this industry makes, the amount of money that's out there the, uh, for the actual uh, human trafficking, we're seeing it come across the border right now. I got a, I got a friend down there now. She's been down in, on the uh, McAllen, on the Texas border in New Mexico yeah. for the last six months filming a documentary. And she says, Kevin, you will not believe the stuff that's happening here. Because this guy will show up and he's like 33 years old mm -hmm. and he's got 27 nieces and nephews with him that are all between like 13 and 20 years of age. Wow. And right away, she says, and they, they, they let him in because what Biden's allowing. We've had more people come across the border in the last year, the first year of his presidency, mm -hmm. and the last four years total of what uh, Trump did, because Trump, Trump was handling the situation pretty well and realized, hey, if you're going to come to this country, come to the country legally. Mm -hmm. But the Democrats want them all in there so they, can, they, they don't care what happens to them. They just want to make sure they can vote and keep voting for a Democrat if we pay for their existence. We'll take care of you from cradle to grave. We'll take care of you forever. Don't worry. I and mean, that's the promise. And uh, it's, it, I think the next step is you're going to see that moving to the internet because it has to, because I know in the, yeah. on the child porn world and internet, I know they're going after people with that now, but uh, uh, the laws, the laws have to change. And I, I just think people, the biggest killer, I think in America, let alone the world too, is, is apathy. People just, eh, you know, yeah. if not it affecting me. To me yeah, it kind of is, yeah, because it kind of is affecting everybody and it's only yeah. going to get worse. You know, it's like the war in Ukraine. Think about this. We're so desensitized for all these video games and movies where the people are killing hundreds of people every day, sitting for hours and hours on, you know, on in on Xbox. They just become desensitized to what what gun play and grenade play and you know on the on the computer. Well, in real life, that's such pretty nasty. If they were marching down our streets right now with with, can, with uh, tanks and people shooting into people's homes, how people would totally freak out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we need to. Uh, 
uh, you know, we, we need to start caring a little bit more, I think, and, and waking up. And I, I, I do see that. Like I said, I think there's a tipping point right now in America that people are saying, OK, enough is enough. And hopefully it shows up in the um, in the voting, uh, you know, the voting days this fall. And uh, whoever gets in office better do their job because too many times politicians only care about themselves, only care about getting reelected once they get in there. I don't know why it's so hard to get horrible people out of the Senate in the House once they get elected, if they're just useless in there. I don't know why they have 40 year careers in there and do have basically do nothing except pad their own pockets. And um, it's just, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to me that uh, uh, people are just so either naive are idiotic or just don't care uh, what's going on in the country right now. So it, it blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, when I started the whole law changing stuff, I had to talk to lobbyists and politicians and stuff. Oh. And a lot of them, all they care about is like money or like a big celebrity uh, attachment to, yeah. you know, take pictures with and stuff where I'm like, well, there's like underage girls and women, you know, that are being online trafficked and, you know, uh, profited from and stuff and this is this is not right it's online rape and they're just kind of like well is there a big celebrity attached <laughs> you know <laughs> you're just like what yeah. the hell is going well, it's on it's like picturing a movie right you're, well who, who's the cast who do you have in the cast yeah <laughs> and I, I understand that i understand that i i get it but yeah. uh boy with with what we need to do in terms of what uh, washington dc is not doing yeah um we we need to uh we need to change things I, I totally agree. So uh, what do you uh, have going on right now? Is there like a movie that you would like to talk about? Um, or is there something like um, that you're basically just produced and it's out right now that you want to talk about? Well, I, yeah, it's been busy. I mean, the last few years, I mean, the, the 2020 was slow. I did eight episodes of a half hour comedy. We'll see if the show gets picked up. But that was the slowest year I've had in 35 years in this business. So um, last year I shot two movies. I directed two of them. Mm -hmm. um, they're all coming out either between summer and Christmas, late summer and Christmas. Um, one is called um, I, uh, Miracle in East Texas. It's a comedy uh, based on a true story. Yeah. About the largest oil find in the history of the world. I directed it. I'm in the movie along with uh, Lou Gossett Jr. and John Ratzenberger and Tyler Maine. Mm -hmm. um, my wife is in it. She did a great job in it as well. That's how we met acting. She came down to guest on Hercules years ago. That's how we met. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, I did another movie I directed, just finished directing called Left Behind. It's based on the Left Behind books. There were like 80 million copies that were sold. Mm -hmm. And it deals with the rapture. So it's Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist, another great cast. I just finished my edit. That'll be out in Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I just finished the Ronald Reagan movie with, um, with Dennis Quaid. Dennis wow. Quaid plays Reagan. I played his pastor. And I have, a, I have a documentary coming out called um, Eating with the Enemy. And I narrate it, and it's uh, about the Last Supper. I love this title, Eating with the Enemy. So it deals with the disciples and Last Supper. Um, I'm leaving for Israel to direct another documentary uh, pretty soon. I'll be over there for about three weeks. And then I'm going to uh, up to Poland to shoot a World War II movie, a true story, based off a Broadway play, based off an Academy um, Award uh, writer, Dan Gordon. Wow. And, um, but right now, I tell people, uh, you know, go to SorboStudios.com. Certainly, SorboStudios.com is a great place to go. Mm -hmm. And I've got all of my past movies. And if you want books, I've mean, I got, I got two books, True Strength and True Faith, that are available. And uh, so I'm just, staying, I'm just staying busy. You know, just uh, I'm actually heading up to uh, Alaska here pretty soon. I got invited to the Iditarod uh, dog slide race. I'm the celebrity starter for this. So, uh, yeah. I get to see what it's like to be behind a bunch of dogs on a mush, you know, going through the snow. I'm looking forward to that. And um, they got a lot of things set up for me to do. Up there. It's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be an interesting trip. Yeah, I'm like, so it's so amazing. You're actually creating way more work than, you know, some actors are their like whole lifetime <laughs> in just like I, one no, year. I've been, yeah, I've been fortunate, you know, I worked, I work hard. I, I know I'm one of the few actors that when I moved out to L.A., I never had to work another job. I worked very well commercially. Yeah. Um, did enough guest spots through the years until I got Hercules, which sent me to New Zealand for seven years. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, I went straight from that show to Andromeda for five years up in Vancouver, British Columbia. So um, I just finished my 70th movie. I've been very busy. There's a, there's a dozen that are bad and I wish I didn't do. But yeah. <laughs> that just sometimes <laughs> happens. Well, I mean, but, I, I uh, but I'm staying busy. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I'm saying it just kind of goes with the territory. You don't know what's going to end up being good and bad. Sometimes yeah. you just kind of take the job, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
No, well, there's a great story with um, with uh, Sir Michael King, uh, the British actor, and yeah. somebody asked him why he did Jaws. I think it was Jaws 3D, and they said you're you're an Academy nominated, um, you know, very your your awards everywhere, wonderful movies, your whole career. Why would you do a movie like Jaws 3D? I mean, did you even see the movie? And he said, no, but I saw the house that built me in Spain, which I thought was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you're going, no, oh, they're paying me well. I think I want to do this movie. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a job. Like people don't get it sometimes. I think when it's entertainment, like it's a job, just like everything else, obviously. Well, we like to work, you know, actors yeah. want to work. And uh, sometimes you take jobs you feel like, eh, you don't know, really know about. But other times you kind of go, well, it looked good on page, but. It could be the director, it could be the editing, it could be the writing, it could be a number of reasons why a movie doesn't work, it could be the actors, it could be a number of reasons, but, yeah. um, you know, it's most of the movies I've done, I'm pretty proud of, and I think there's some really good messages in there, so I recommend families out there to watch What If, God's Not Dead, Let There Be Light, and Soul Surfer, there, I gave you four movies they should check out. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm going to check them out too, because I already saw the one about Texas that I wanted to check out, but then I was like, Okay, I'm gonna see all the other ones, you know, and just kind of watch all of them all at once. <laughs> make, pop, make popcorn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be sitting there like all night, like binge watching your movies. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, no, but uh, I'm so happy uh, to have you on my show. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, and yeah, everybody go and check out Kevin Sorbo's movies. And I'm I'm personally so proud of you for like doing oh, all you. that you do, like with your own, you know, movies and production studio. I know how hard it is. So like more props to you. And uh, yeah, make sure you go and check out Kevin Sorbo. And thank you so much for being on my show. Thank and you. if you ever need anything from me, you know, I'm here. You can reach out to me anytime you want. Will do. I'll come in person and do the, do an interview in person there. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That, that so would be fun. Good. But uh, you look great. I just got done working out, so I'm all hot and sweaty. But uh, I'm <laughs> here anyway. I tell people, keep working out. I still work out every day. I'm an old dude. So keep working out. It's good for you. Yeah, I totally agree. And eat healthy. All right. <laughs> all all right, right. Thank bless. you so Take much. Care. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.